is the managing partner of this new entry into professional sports in New York City. The details will come later when Jerry addresses you. You may know the name Saperstein. It's been active in professional sports in New York City and around the world for almost half a century, 47 years to be exact. You remember the name Abe Saperstein, the owner of the Harlem Globetrotters. Well, Jerry is a former owner too, and he's done a lot with professional sports. We have a few people that are going to speak to you from the league. They're going to be short statements. We don't want to keep you here all day. We're going to have Mr. Ray Sicola, the owner of the Boston franchise. And he'll speak to you, and he'll be followed by the media information director, Mr. Rick Pearson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you Mr. Ray Sicola, who's going to just say a few words. I would like to take about that much time to talk about the concept. Uh, I was asked by one individual here why this league is different from, why this is different from some of the, uh, the other professional tennis leagues that have been formed. I'll just lean over. Um, we figured out at our Chicago meeting, we were sitting and, uh, in the corner making some notes, and we estimated that probably among the 16 owners and the people they represented sitting around the table in Chicago, there was probably a, a billion dollars in assets. Uh, there's some heavy, heavy people in this league, believe me. We also figured out that everyone, that every major sports league, both hockey leagues, both basketball leagues, both football leagues, the Globetrotters, virtually all fields of major league professional sports were represented in that room by people who were now or had at one time been involved in those leagues. Um, it's an incredible bunch of people. Um, the, the list is, uh, is incredible. We have people that are involved in uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. They were interested. They've had some arena problems, and they'll be with us next year. But they're involved in the Cincinnati Bengals. They're former owners of the Cincinnati Reds. Um, we have people that are WHA teams. We have a former chairman of the board of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, the ownership group is, is very, very impressive, and, it's, and I'm really enthusiastic about it. I took a job with them. I would assume that they're going to pay me, so I... I guess I'm on their team. I, um, the interesting thing that strikes me about this league that I don't think anyone has grasped yet is you have to go back to the late 40s for the formation of the National Basketball Association to find anything else like this. Because the American Football League, the American Basketball Association, and the World Hockey Association are all, in essence, duplications of a league that already exists. This is something brand new. It, it's born of its own volition at this point. It is now a professional team league. Uh, there are teams in college, certainly, but this is a professional team league. So we're, we're looking at the first, at a first occurrence in like 30 years at this point, and I, I think that's an impressive fact. A uh, couple other questions. We are talking about contract tennis players. For three months a year, they will have non-exclusive contracts with World Team Tennis B by team as a member of that team and with that team. The teams will, the six member teams, three men, three women, will travel as teams. They will have pension plans, group, he group health and life plans. Um, they will get their hotel bills and their air bills and all this paid for them. These are major league teams. There are playoffs with extra money for winning playoffs. There are playoff pools. We'll, we'll play 22 series matches at Madison Square Gardens, the main building, beginning May 1974. We will play a three month season. The ownership of the New York team is vested in myself and my sister, Mrs. Eloise Berkeley, and with Mr. Vin Dratty, chairman of the National Football Foundation. He is also chairman of David Crystal, a leading manufacturer of sports apparel in this country. We are forbidden by, by league regulations to announce our roster. However, we're having in August our first league draft, and at that time, Immediately thereafter, we will announce our full roster of players. If you happen to have any questions, I'll be happy if I happen to have the answers to answer them. Jerry, what's the name of the team going to be? We haven't chosen a name, but we're considering a few. Can you give us some examples? Well, the New York sets have been suggested. <laughs> it rhymes with bets. Any other questions? We don't have the date set yet, but we're confident we'll have the 22 dates. In May? 
May, June, and July of 1974. At night? In the, at, at night. Obviously, there may be some afternoon, but we're primarily shooting for nights. That's one of the questions I don't have an answer for. Jerry, Jerry, does that be a conflict between the USLTI in any way? There may be. We're not sure yet. There, will there be any conflict between World Team Tennis and the United States Lawn Tennis Association? There may be a conflict. This will have to be resolved. We, we don't look for any conflict between World Team Tennis and Lamar Hunt's group. We do not look for any conflict between World Team Tennis and Lamar Hunt's group. Are you interested in foreign players? Yes, we're very interested in foreign players. We're going to attempt to sign the top male and female professional tennis players in the world, in the United States and outside the United States. Have you been in contact with the International Lawn Tennis Federation? Representatives of World Team Tennis have met with them and perhaps may be meeting with them at Wimbledon right now. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for coming here. Excuse me, Larry? Uh, well, George McCall, our commissioner, Dennis Murphy, our president, Jordan Kaiser, executive vice president of finance, and Steve Arnold, who's director. Through exciting colors, which still, though, and very decidedly so, are still tennis. You have a fabric that moves that lets you be comfortable, and a great new look. Does anyone, does anyone have any panties under the dresses that we like to show? Because that really is all part of it. You do match. Uh, I knew that would get something started, Linda. <laughs> the grass of fresh green, the bonanza, great colors that give you a new look in your tennis wardrobe. Thank you. Of course, color is equally important for men. I think we are giving the man a chance too. Yes, there is women's lib represented in uh, classic white, which of course still is dominant in any tennis player's wardrobe, but with a touch of color. And you can see how it still remains playable, how it still remains acceptable to even the country clubs that, uh, that represent the traditionals in our business. You have various qualities in shirts, various qualities in the shorts, and I think great looking sweaters <laughs> with a new look. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. That was Jess, which we will be seeing increasingly now that World Team Tennis uh, has been born. We still want to know that it also is fun and games and that you can be amused by, by all of it. Here, a little bit of our impression by combining the, uh, the classic white with color and a fun print. Nancy, thank you. That is, shorts and skirts as they are teamed with your various designs in tops. Here, Linda is showing us. And of course, you can put the ball into the side pocket, the name for the skirt, making it very practical. And of course, when you both look at this, you can't help but say,